do not let having to show your face hinder you from making the video. Seven different types of videos you can make that you don't have to ever show your face on camera. <laughs> PowerPoint, screencast, animations. So, you know, you might use a tool to create animated characters or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, a graphic explainer. Oh, an infographic. infographic. An infographic, oh my gosh. We got the kinetic type, we've got stock footage, and then that point of, those point of view videos. So, I mean. There's all sorts of ways to create videos without ever putting your face in front of a camera. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the Visual Lounge. We are here talking about video workflow stuff and I've got Justin and Andy with me. We're so grateful that you guys are here watching with us. And today we are gonna take a little bit of a different approach because we know that sometimes you don't want to be on camera. You don't like seeing yourself on camera. This is something we hear from a lot of people that making video can be difficult because they don't wanna take that step. And we're here to talk about how you can do that. What are some things that you can do so that you don't have to be the face on camera or even necessarily have someone else as a face on camera. So gentlemen, welcome, we're glad you're here. Thank you for joining me once again. Uh, big big challenge here, right? Um, we have, I think, learned to overcome this feeling of not wanting to be on camera or being okay with it, but a lot of people really struggle with this. And so we wanna give them some advice. So where, where do we wanna start in this conversation? Cause I wanna get practical here. I wanna get into stuff that like, what can people really do in this situation? Yeah, I think, I think one thing I would think through is what types of videos you plan to make, first of all, and then how can you supplement not being on camera? So you are going to have trade offs by not being on camera. But, um, you know, depending on what your goal is, you absolutely can make a tutorial video without being on camera. You absolutely can make a how to video without being on camera. You, you know, um, it was funny as I was thinking through like some of the different channels that I even watch on YouTube, like there's one, there's one, uh, channel where this, this guy fixes cars. He never shows his face. It's his whole shtick. He never shows his face. You never see who he is. Um, because he's fixing cars most of the time you're seeing his hands and his work. Like, so like he's able to, you know, create very effective, uh, videos without ever showing his face. So I think just kind of thinking through what types of videos you could potentially make. Um, I mean, obviously for us, anything screen recorded, there's a lot of things you can do, whether it's graphics or on screen, and that's the focus. And that's the thing too, when you think about this, the focus for your video, especially if you're doing screen, retort, just screen recorded content, you, you aren't the focus of that. You're trying to, most likely you're trying to demonstrate a piece of software or show something off. And I think that should be the focus. Well, Justin, I, I like what you've said, and I like the, the, that we're establishing that, you know, this is not, it's not a requirement. I think we talk a lot about because mm -hmm. it's so easy to put, say like, let's make a video. We've got the camera right there. And, and then some of these, sometimes the other things to be creative takes a little bit of time, but I like that we're establishing up front. It is effective. You can make an effective, uh, engaging, interesting video without ever showing your, your face. And I actually, I mean, as we prepped for this and I was thinking through like, what are we going to do? I, I wrote a list. I've got a list of types of videos that we could we could potentially talk about making. Um, I know we maybe have a few examples of those, but I think I, I think the first thing for me is to think about like why. First of all, let's let's reverse the question. Like not why why are you on camera? It's like why why would you need to be on camera? What is it that that's going to add? And you can quickly mm -hmm. determine if that's going to add value for. A conversation like we're having today, I think it makes sense that we're you're seeing our faces because we're having a conversation and there's nothing else to show right now. But for a lot of things, you have to wonder, does you being in the video get in the way of the video and what you're trying to accomplish? I think about our instructional designers creating tutorial videos about Camtasia or Snagit. And does should they be in, in that simple tutorial? If I'm just looking for an answer, do I want to see them? Does that matter that much? And it right. really might not. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to say, it depends on your, you know, we say it depends a lot because there's so many variables to these things. Um, if we're talking about YouTube tutorials, you know, we, we see them as more common places for, for faces. But as you brought up our instructional designers, our tutorials on TechSmith.com are about the software, not about the instructional designer. And so you won't see their faces on there. Uh, it's more about focusing on the software. So yeah, absolutely. It doesn't need to be uh, something that we always show your face uh, on the video. And in fact, I've done you know a few internal share outs where I put my face in the corner and suddenly I'm in the way of something I'm trying to show. So so it can actually be really in the way, uh, quite, quite literally. 
So, so let's do this. Let's talk about some ideas. Let's give out some ideas of some videos. And if we got something, uh, if we happen to have a, a link that we can share or show an example, that that's bonus. Um, but I can, I can start. I think one of the first places I go to, because I do this a lot as someone who presents at conferences and events, I think PowerPoint is this hugely powerful medium. There's so much information you can share. I, I mean, we have to be careful with PowerPoint because PowerPoint can get used in ways that really it's not the best, like tons of text. And you, I think if you did something with lots of images, you could have some, you could even build in some uh, effective and meaningful transitions or small animations. I mean, you've got a whole platform and then you go and record that. It, I think that can be a huge way, an easy way to make a, an effective video where you're sharing knowledge, maybe you're teaching something, uh, you know, maybe it's a marketing video even, but you could do that. You, you, I look at, let's take uh, Apple, for example, uh, the keynotes that Steve Jobs would do. Yeah, yes, it's Steve Jobs. But essentially, what's he doing? He's giving a keynote with a, well, he's using keynote, I'm sure not PowerPoint. He's using PowerPoint. <laughs> and that's what you're seeing a lot of, right? Like, I, so I think there's a lot of video that you could do just with mm -hmm. something like PowerPoint or Google Slides or whatever tool that you're using. Yeah, and it's it's that information that's inside of that presentation. Again, there's there's flaws that you could have within your, but there's lots of flaws. You could have a flaw with a really any video anyway so like i wouldn't get too caught up in that but just as a mode of getting information out yeah record recording your powerpoint presentation actually could be a lot better than saying oh yeah here's the slides and let's set up a meeting and let's go through it or um you know i, I can I, i've had this done, happen before too where it's um you know, I get full context out of somebody recording the presentation and then giving that to me and then I can go watch it, even external. So they, there might be, like you said, a keynote, uh, you know, a virtual keynote. That's just a recorded PowerPoint presentation at this point most of the time. And you can get really good information out of those. And it's an easy way if you if you don't want to worry about trying to cut in cameras and, and worry about that. It does take a lot of the hassle out of um, trying to present that information. Yeah. yeah, and I try and think even about like what parts of the video are we are we normally putting our faces in? Like, if it's a tutorial or training, like maybe at the beginning and at the end, you'd see someone say, "Hi, I'm so and so." And I, well, if you don't want to have your video on, then we don't need that introduction anyway, and you can get right into the content. So sometimes, I mean, it can really even you know dive right in to a, if it's a PowerPoint or use a title slide and maybe have a picture of yourself or just your name and title. Um, there doesn't have to be an on-camera intro. Uh, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, I think about when personality matters, right? Like does the personality or the persona of that person mm. matter to the content? And I think with a lot of instructional content, it does not, um, especially, especially when you're not trying to elevate whoever's presenting it as like an expert. Now there are times when that makes sense, right? Like I, I, when I was working in a pharmaceutical plant, there was one guy in this far pharmaceutical, uh, manufacturing plant that I worked at that he was the water purification guy. Everyone knew him as a water purification guy. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to learn about that system from him. You didn't want to hear from me. And so there would be value in like, oh, let's present him as the expert. But in, you know, like, but in our case of like our tutorials, I love our instructional designers and they're fantastic and they all have great personalities and we want them to, to rise to kind of levels of people understanding what they have to bring to the table. But when it comes to what I think you said, Andy, it's about the product. It is never about them. It is about you as a consumer being successful. And frankly, if we put our instructional designers in that kind of get in the way too much, that's going to be that that becomes a problem because you know you know and and you know there's reasons you could we could argue probably the other way but i think from like i just want to get you from zero to ready to do this task as quick as possible we can cut out a lot of need for this because it doesn't matter well i think it's well, a, the other i think time. it's one of those i think it's one of those things that can just be a hang up to even getting started or completing that doesn't have to be so maybe after you start making uh, a few of those PowerPoint presentation videos or a tutorial and you haven't shown your face and you're more comfortable with the ins and outs of actually making a video and hitting complete and publishing that out and seeing the results of it, then maybe, yeah, then you maybe worry about trying to add yourself into the front or trying to do a little bit more. But I think part of the daunting task is, yeah, when, when I think about putting myself on camera, I think about how do I not just at the beginning, but how am I going to get myself in the camera throughout the whole video? 
um, mm. is kind of a thought in terms of like, I'm going to have to be on a lot. And even if I am, I'm much more worried about what, how I look and how, how that's getting presented and everything's, uh, you know, how, how am I looking versus is the information getting across properly? You know, it's, and again, it's not that you can't do both. There's tons of people that do. And, and honestly, the more comfortable you get with it, the better you'll get at that being able to do both at the same time. But, um, yeah, don't, don't let, you know, how do I look? And is, is, am I stumbling over this word? And then that's the thing too, is when you do make mistakes, it's a lot easier to edit just your audio over a, a presentation than it is to try to like edit your face. And a, now you got a weird jump cut and I get, you're oh. in a whole different ball game at that point. Yeah, super true. Uh, the other thing I was going to add earlier was just that, like, the the other see, I'm I'm actually a huge proponent. Like, I, I almost started pushing back because I want to say like, no, no, personality makes such a better video. But again, it's all about context. And if we're talking about training and you know workplace comms and, and things like that, maybe maybe personality is only going to be a detriment because now you're saying, oh, well, that wasn't a video made by joe that was a video made by mike and i only want to watch videos made by joe he's so much more interesting to well if we can kind of find a, a company brand or tone that we speak in um and and make the video it doesn't matter who made the training it's all good training and if we're looking forward to one personality over the other we're missing the point of the training uh so yeah i think there's definitely definitely a time when turn the camera off and and kind of leaving self out of it uh and just delivering the information is the right method and the right uh way to go again i'm i'm always more interested in watching a fun video and a personality driven video who isn't uh but there's a time and a place and uh, if we're talking about learning and training then that may not be the right place well i think to that point andy i think i, I think you're right i think there's there, there's balance here in making those decisions but i think if i'm if i'm in a product and i'm looking for an answer and i have to go and right. watch you having fun and i'm not getting my yep. answer I, you know, I'm moving on. I'm doing something else. I'm moving to a different product. I'm I'm trying to find an answer yeah. someplace else. So I think it's again looking at whether it's a, a PowerPoint presentation, a screencast. Maybe you're making an, an anim using some kind of animated tool to build your video, or you know, it's a graphic explainer, like a you know a visual graphic or something like that. That's you know walking through it. Like I don't care what it is. I just want, I want you know and. We've talked about this before, but the, the one of the most important things is, is it relevant to me? Is it answering my questions as the viewer? And beyond yeah. that, the other stuff, like having a personality to connect with, that could be, it could be helpful, but not if it doesn't help me get my job done, if it doesn't serve right. me as the viewer. And so I think it's just finding that balance and understanding that you can do both successfully, and but you don't have to be on camera, but you know, there's, you got to think about what that means for your video. If you're not going to be, if you're not going to show yourself in any way, and if you are going to be on camera, how do you balance that? So you're not getting in the way, uh, both physically, literally in the way of the content that you need to show it also, you know, adding on things that spend time, you know, like we, we've deal with this even here, right? Like how much of an introduction should I do? How much inter of an introduction should I do when I'm doing the interview show? How much, you know, how much, should I be bringing in the upfront before just diving in? And, you know, and it's mm -hmm. a hard balance. I think it takes a lot of time and, it, you know, and I'm sure we haven't nailed quite right what that looks like, but, you know, hopefully we keep trying and we'll get, we'll get better as we go. As I think all of everyone listening to this will as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's one of those things too, that's hard because some of it's personal preference in some ways too. Like I'm thinking through my, my viewing habits and, I think what you're talking about, Matt, is true. If there's like sort of the one-off, if I'm looking for an answer on this piece of software, like I don't really care that it's John who's delivering that. But I do think there is something valuable in, um, at least in a long-term uh, way that like the connection of seeing somebody's face does matter. Like we are like a, as a human to human kind of interaction, like seeing somebody's face does sort of it does something to us where like now I'm more connected to TechSmith because I saw Andy in that video and I see Matt on the live stream and I see, you know what I mean? Like there's just something different there. Um, I don't know. Do you guys feel the same way? That's kind of, it's kind of a different yeah, angle and, at it, but. 
Well, and I think that's why I struggle too, right? Because my, my mind automatically is going to go to YouTube because that's where I work and spend a lot of my time. Uh, and of course, I know from spending that time on there that engagement goes up when there's a person on screen. It's funny because hmm. you talk about uh, the YouTuber you're watching whose shtick is actually to stay off screen. Uh, and that works for him. That's kind of become his thing. But for most people, like they connect to an individual. So I can learn uh, how to use this camera from anybody but I've got my favorite YouTubers. I know their personality. I like learning from them. I'm going to go to them. Um, again, it's, it's a different place. It's a different environment and it's a different um, way of learning. So mm -hmm. this isn't a one size fits all. This isn't going to cover everything. Um, but I definitely know that engagement goes up on YouTube when I see faces um, and, and, or when my audience sees faces. So, so that helps, but that's not the only videos we're talking about. Well, here's, here's what I want to say, because I, I, I don't disagree, um, but I'm going to take a different perspective here because I think, uh, you know, I, I have that, some insights. So I think, of course, like, and I would argue that you're right, Andy. I think there's something about engaging, there's something about connecting that's good with, you, with seeing people's. But here, here we're talking about, you know, making videos without a camera. Mm -hmm. And here's, here's been my experience. You know, I've been at TechSmith for a millennium here now, it seems like. And I, you know, I started off creating tutorials. I've, I've been a voice for the tutorials before. I've, you know, I've done a lot, of, a lot of that work. And I've been at events where people will say to me, I recognize your voice. Oh, you know, like, even though they never maybe saw my face, they knew and they felt the connection, right? Like, uh, and there, there was actually for a while, I was like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been Ryan Ace or someone, one of my, our coworkers, right? It wasn't me, but they thought it was, and they felt like that. Instantly, mm -hmm. we were connected, and it was only a voice; it was not the face. So, what I would argue is that, like, yes, I agree from a, especially from a YouTube perspective, from a lot of business perspective, like there is definitely value in seeing those people. I love seeing people in companies. Like, one of my favorite things to do is to go to a company like their about pages to like the leadership profile and look at who's in leadership, and I, I like to see who's yep. at the company. But I think you can make that without ever having to have a camera, like to, to do the video. I think you, there's ways to do that. Um, in fact, Justin, I think this is probably a really great place. If Do, do we want to show you that example that you, you shared with us about how someone yeah. else is doing it? Because it's, it, it's not eliminating the face, but it's taking away the, the dynamic of motion video, right? Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of the, you know, a, it's it's sort of like a cheat in a lot of ways because it's it's getting that connection you're seeing who's there i think that's a, a maybe a small step we're not saying um don't be uh personable or don't be don't have a personality uh, in a lot of ways or don't or only focus on the content and be very sterile and be very you know um i think there are ways around all of those and and you could do you could have a very boring video and be on camera you could, or a very you know straight cut video and be on camera or you know everybody's been to a uh, sort of a stale presentation right there's been there's good presentations it's not necessarily the medium that's at fault um, but here in this in this case this will be a, a tutorial video that's just it's pretty um, straightforward but what I liked about it is the tutorial video it starts they introduce themselves and rather than having themselves be on the webcam the whole time, which you see in a lot of tutorial videos, or start on a webcam and then maybe drop to like a square or a circle, picture in picture on the side, uh, what Steve does in this video is he just brings up his picture and brings up his title. And it's a super effective way to now, oh yes, I, you know, I know who Steve is in this case because I've watched several of his videos, but if I didn't, it allows me to know, oh, this is who made the video. This is who's behind this product. It adds just that little bit of uh, extra touch. Okay, well, let's let's take a look. And we're gonna play. Hey, this is Steve Toth from SEO Notebook where I email tips like this each. Cool, I mean, I don't know if we need to see much more than that, right? That's kind of, kind of the thing. There he is, there's Steve. Yep. Yeah. And so for anybody listening, it's just, it's literally, uh, Steve Toth. It's his, uh, just a lower third that comes in in the bottom left of the screen. It's his headshot and his name, and that's all it is. And it will come off. It'll swipe off as he gets into the tutorial. And then at the end, it'll come back on and it'll kind of re show him on the screen. And so I think that's just a very effective way to be on camera without, or be on, have your face be on the video without being on camera. And so 
I, I liked that. I thought about how I saw that video the other day and I thought about even how I could kind of use that, um, especially for quicker videos um, where I don't want to spend a ton of time trying to edit my webcam and edit the footage and line it up and do all that. Um, but also want to kind of let, you know, cause sometimes you get, especially if it's, even if it's internal, if you're sending a video out, not everybody might know who you are or what you look like, depending on the size of your company. And especially if you're yeah. going external, people might not know who you are or why they should listen to you. So I think that's a, a very easy thing to do. Even if you're kind of afraid of putting your uh, face on camera, you can kind of introduce yourself, throw a picture on there, throw your title on there. If you got some expertise, maybe you're the water management guy, like Matt was talking about, uh, expert, mm -hmm. and you can say that, right? Yeah. You know what I like about that too is his, uh, his example, you know, is, is coming on screen with an image and a title, uh, and his his URL was over on the other bottom right side of the video, um, and he gave his elevator pitch, right? It was, hi, I'm Steve. I email you updates weekly, and then he goes right into it. And so there wasn't a long, I've been doing it for this long. My degree is in this. Here's why I'm an expert. Da, da, da. No, no, no. You don't need any of that. You don't need the full-length bio. You just need the quick picture, title. Here's what I do. Here's what, you're, here's what value you're getting from it, right? All in that elevator pitch was like, you're going to get weekly uh, information from me. Uh, so I think that's super valuable and he did it without ever being on camera. Yeah. Well, oh, looking at time, I want to make sure we're, we're talking about a couple, couple more ideas here. Cause I love this idea. So put yourself on there as an image. I think look at the types of videos you could create as well. And I think the one thing I'm thinking about is that like, Again, let's not let you get in the way of, of content. Um, one example, and, and this is a really rough like prototype video I built. I was trying to show someone how they could recreate the style video. So it's not like, it's not, doesn't make sense. It's not meant to make sense. It's just, I'm showing some effects like, oh, look what you could do. And it's a kinetic text type of video. And this is, I think this is something that was actually pretty popular a while ago and kind of, it's just, it can be a lot of work. So I don't think it's always the video type you want to go to, but um, I, I would like to show just the idea of it because I think there's, there's value in scenes like this whole video would actually, if you had your camera video in there would probably get in the way. But the other thing it does, it actually, you don't need necessarily a voiceover. You could do it with a voiceover, but this is just going to be music and text on screen. So let me, uh, give me a second here. You guys can sound smart while I try to pull things up here to <laughs> get it ready. That's funny. Yeah, I think I referenced a video. We were talking about that Ira Glass on creativity video where he talks about like, you know, how it's uh, something you have to constantly, constantly produce good work, constantly make videos over and over again to get better at it. And that was a, a kinetic text video where it's just his words on screen because I think it was from a radio clip or, or a podcast clip. Uh, and rather than taking video that didn't exist, just put kinetic typography on there. Uh, and a lot of people don't know that word too, so I'm glad we're sharing that. If you're ever looking for uh, that animated text effect where it kind of moves in and seems like it's in its own 3D space, kinetic typography or kinetic text. And this is very, like, very basic. So please, I'm, it's not, it's not great. And what you're going to, for those that are listening, it's just going to be, it's just like a series of words popping on the screen kind of to music with some different little effects to help it make it kind of sing, sizzle a little bit, you might say. So here we go. So it's really short too, because like I said, I was just playing with some uh, some of the ideas here to make it work, and I, hopefully that came through on the screen. It was a little delayed here and there, so I'm, I hope you could see some of it. But I, I, you know, I love the idea of them. Like I love the idea of these videos that just it's going to be fast. Mm -hmm. It's going to be you know probably somewhat um, intense, emotional, depending on what you're trying to go for. But it's going to be probably get you hyped up. But I think there's yeah. a lot you could do with just applying some yeah. graphics without having to make it into this big, like, oh, we have to be on screen or video production. It's like, no, we're just gonna some, throw some words at you to get you interested and I mean, excited in that's, this thing. That's interesting, because it made, what it made me think of was um, was like an advertisement. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, like that, that feel, that the way that felt was um, like some sort of hype video or ad. And that's absolutely another type of video that you could make without showing your face. If you want to kind of create these feature sort of hype sets, if you've got a software product or even a, a service that you kind of want to show off and what you guys 
do uh you absolutely can make a video with just text and some music that shows off your services or shows off your products and um do it in a way that's you know super eye-catching without ever having anybody on camera yeah i was gonna say we do we've done hype videos in the past i know uh every major i'm sure shoe company does hype videos computer companies phone carriers like these are the things you see on tv where it's just like either text on screen or images of the product next to text on screen um but half the time you're not going to hear narration so you don't even not only do you not need yourself on camera you may not need to hear yourself on a microphone either because this isn't mm -hmm. about you for sure this is definitely about a product at that point uh so or whatever whatever the subject is and in fact we uh i was sharing about this yesterday we had a, a hype video a couple years ago that was for a product release. I wasn't trying to train anybody. I wasn't trying to really show in-depth use of it. I was just showing what's new in the product and trying to kind of tease it out a little bit, give people a taste for it so they come back wanting more. Yeah. Well, I, I, a couple other a couple other videos that I want to just types to talk about, and then we really probably should wrap up and get into our, our final points of view. Um, so another one that I want to mention is stock footage. Like I know stock footage gets a bad rap sometimes, stock photo gets a bad rap, but there is a lot of, with some creativity, there are some really cool things you can do if you have the right imagery that you don't have to go out and shoot that, that footage and you can put it together and, and do some creative, creative kind of thinking and editing around it to make it tell the story or give the message that mm -hmm. you want. Tie that in with these other kind of concepts, a screen recording or PowerPoint and you know, you can you can make that go a long way. And then, the, Justin, you actually kind of mentioned this one is, uh, you know, if you've got a mechanic or you're doing something and it's showing stuff, do the point of view video, right? Like, mm -hmm. show your hands, show whatever it is you're doing. If you're teaching something that, and, and that actually, there's a Dr. Richard Mayer, who University of San Diego does a lot of research around instructional video. One of his papers actually talks about this, that is a, it is a very effective way to teach people something from, if it's you want to show them, show them from your point of view, not a, a third kind of person mm -hmm. point of view, and they're, they're going to be more likely to be able to learn. So just a couple others. So, you know, we've got, what's this, uh, seven different types of videos you can make that you don't have to ever show your face on camera. I like it. Nice. Can you list off your seven there, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, so I, was, I was trying to remember all seven now. <laughs> PowerPoints, screencast animations so you know you might use a tool to create animated characters or something like that mm -hmm. uh, a graphic explainer i can't think of the actual word like a you know like the long yeah it's like an yeah explainer, explainer graphic video or, or what's a, what are the long usually they're images that like have data tied to I can't, i'm not oh an infographic. infographic an infographic oh my gosh let's can we edit that guys i know an yeah. animated no, infographic <laughs> video yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> infographic andy you've made you've made one of those before yeah, I made a couple of them actually. We did the value of visuals one, and we did the the value of maintenance video. I think they both started with value of, but yeah, we, uh, those are really fun to do too because you need no footage at all. In fact, half the time it's shapes, and uh, we use a couple a uh, couple images that maybe weren't created in Camtasia. But I did I did two of them in Camtasia fully, and they were really fun to create. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so going on, we got the kinetic type. We've got stock footage, and then that point of those point of view videos. So <laughs> I mean. The, the great thing is I'm sure we're missing some. Um, there's probably other ways that you can do this because we showed the example where someone brought, brought just, br it's they brought in their face still, just a, a still image yep. they used probably their headshot or whatever. Um, you could even put someone's stock photo, a stock photo in there for somebody if you don't want it to look Absolutely. like you. <laughs> so, but yeah, no one would know. Not at all. So let's let's get into our final takes here, and um, as we wrap up, I'll, I think I'll start off today, and then we'll, we'll let you guys finish up. Um, here's the thing. You can make all sorts of videos. My final take is that you can make all sorts of videos. You can do what you want. The reality is, is you are good enough to be on video, but if you're, if you're uncomfortable or you feel like it's going to take away, be creative. Think about that message that you're going to send to people and do that well. Give them the answers that they need. Help them be successful. And if you do that, you in, in still inject your personality, inject your, your, your culture, things like that, that you want to get across, but you can make a great video and you never have to have your face shown. But I want to emphasize you are good enough. You are, you look great. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. It's okay to show your face. There, there shouldn't, you shouldn't feel so self-conscious. I mean, look at me. I do it every single week. All right. It's true, and you know we all feel that way. I was gonna say, it's, someone's lying if they say like, no, I mean, I love being on camera. I, 
I don't know who the first time they see themselves on camera is like, oh, I look good. No, most of the time it's like, why didn't anyone tell me? So um, I think I, I got to agree. You absolutely should be on camera if you're comfortable being on camera. Maybe you're not comfortable being on camera, or maybe this video just doesn't call for someone being on camera. Not every video needs video footage of you talking to the camera. Not every video needs footage of you looking at the camera. Uh, as Matt mentioned, it could be stock footage, it could be animations, it could be a PowerPoint. There's all sorts of ways to create videos without ever putting your face in front of a camera. So if it's not something you're interested in doing or not something you ever planned on doing, you can still work around it. I went into video production because I like being on the other side of the camera. It just so happens that through the past year of events, I've ended up on, on the front side of the camera too, and I've gotten used to it. It's not so bad. All right. Excellent. Justin, final take. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say do not let having to show your face hinder you from making the video. So start like, and it goes with what Matt and what Andy have both said. Start by not using your face. If that's what's going to stop you from making a video, do something else. Figure out how a work away or work around on how you can do something different, um, and then build up from there. If you do want to end up adding your face later, there's some workarounds that we talked about that you can use: adding a photo, doing some different things, or you can, you know, start playing around with adding yourself in later. It's not something that you have to do right off the bat. Excellent. Well, excellent takeaways, gentlemen. As we wrap things up today, of course, you know, we would love to see your lovely faces. Make us a video. Tell us what you think about this. Respond to us in a video. That'd be awesome. You don't have to show your face. But if you do have comments, feedback, thoughts, we've had a few come in, which we're so grateful for. You know, you can send those to us at the visual lounge at techsmith.com. We're happy to take those in. Uh, you know, just a quick story. I had someone email me asking for some help. Uh, you know, it, what a great way to connect with them that they came through through the inbox. So uh, we love to see what you guys are doing, hear what questions that you have that we hopefully will be able to answer at some point uh, between this, our other podcast, part of the Visual Lounge or tutorials, whatever it might be. But if you got stuff that you're liking, you know, give us a like rating, you know, tell us what you think is working and what's not. Anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. We will see you guys with another episode soon. Until then, take care. <laughs>